Tony Spinner, 2011. We hebben hem in 2005 al een keer getroffen en waren toen helemaal enthousiast van hem. En vijf jaar later is hij dan eindelijk bij ons de gast in Blue Smooth. Tony, welcome back. I told uh, our viewers and listeners that you were five years ago one of the first blues people who, who we interviewed. Yeah. And now, five years later, again, you're a guest and you're still going strong, have a new city out. Um, down home mojo. Yep. I remember it right. Yes, very good. First of all, um, the songs. All own written? Yes, absolutely. My own songs. Uh, we can play a lot of covers in the clubs, but um, I, I got a lot of stuff in my head and it all came out through the guitar. So, original music, that's where it's at. For the people who don't know you, you've always been a musician and uh, been asked for your original to sing in total for the backing back up uh, singer yeah. became a guitarist and now back to the, the love of your life the blues yeah. or the rock what i do notice is well it gets you somewhere toto but the love still is the blues that's yeah. why you, you love it's the small clubs why well uh you can you can do two things and i, I figured this out a long time ago um when you play with a big band and uh, it doesn't even have to be total. Uh, back in the uh, 80s, I had a band. We had big PA, big lights. It was a big show. And we got a lot of people that would come watch us play. But I noticed nobody was listening. And uh, they were just looking. They were looking at the big lights and the big show and the big hair. And, you know, the circus. We call it the circus. And... Um, it frustrated me because I was trying to play music from the heart and people would just, eh, they weren't paying attention. They were just, just looking at all the stuff and weren't hearing the music. So uh, I knew back then um, I got rid of the big PA, the big lights, and I just played real music for myself. And eventually those people quit coming and a new lot of people came in and they would listen and they appreciated, you know, real music. And uh, that's what I'm trying to get back to. Uh, the total thing was great experience. You know, I learned a lot about singing because I was never interested in singing, but I had to know how to sing to do that. And I learned uh, a lot about guitar playing from Steve. And it was, you know, it was fun, but uh, I did that for longer than I meant to do it. <laughs> and uh, I'm getting older, so I want to play my music while I still can, while I'm still able. And uh, I'm 48 years old. I've been doing this since I was eight years old, uh, playing guitar, and professionally since I was 14. And it's all I like to do. And it's, it's a gift and a pleasure to do it. And if anybody can dig it, come see the show, man. <laughs> well, especially about your singing, because five years ago we saw you the first time, and, and it never struck me that you're such a good singer, and tonight I did, because I had a headphone up, or you hear anything properly, and so can our listeners and viewers uh, check that out. You're the music you're writing, is it music-driven or uh, song-driven? A little bit of both. Um, there's a couple songs you could almost call pop on there. <laughs> uh, and then most of it's based in the blues, you know, but uh, music is music, it's either good or bad, and I really like this record. Um, like I said, my influences, Roy Gallagher, Dwayne Allman, uh, Jimi Hendrix, uh, all, all the real blues, you know, the Lightning Hopkins and Freddie King and Albert and Muddy. Uh, but I don't sound like anybody, which is good. I don't want to copy. I just want to take those influences and try to express something myself. It's very hard to do. Um, a lot of young players... You know, when I was younger, too, the same thing. You're so influenced by those people, you copy. You end up copying them. And Even the mistakes they made in the songs. <laughs> Absolutely. That's kind of cool. Kind of those, <laughs> oh, that's all out of tune and it's in the wrong key. Let me learn that. <laughs> so uh, you have to eventually uh, get to the point where you can pay tribute to what they do, but don't, don't play, don't do it. Try to do your own thing with it, I guess. You can only do so much, you know. But uh, I'm very happy at the point I'm at. I'm, I'm pretty happy with uh, uh, the, the music, that, especially the new record. And the, the band is great. The guys are great. Nice people. And uh, I just hope to keep putting out more good music. 
The songs, where are they about? Do you have a pencil and a notepad uh, on the side of your bed if you get a struck by an idea and idea you say I can write it down that's what about of, do you sit down write the notes and the song uh, I can't read music so usually what I do if I have an idea and yeah it's weird because sometimes it, it it'll just hit me and I'll be running around the house looking for a pen and something to write on uh, today as a matter of fact at Michelle's see uh, an idea hit me so I was looking for something to write on and I had a, a set of strings so I took the paper off the strings and found a pen and I started scribbling down. Then I had to go find a guitar. And by then I'd forgotten the music part, so it became something else. But it's just like anything uh, creative. It's just the spur of the moment. And sometimes the best stuff comes out when you're not thinking too much. It just kind of happens. Hey, last summer you did a tour with uh, Kofi Baker, the, yeah. the Korean tribute tour. How was that? It was great, man. Kofi's great. He's, I mean, you know, Ginger's great, and Kofi's his son. And he can play a lot like Ginger, but he has his own thing, too. And uh, we're going to do it again, I believe, in April. Uh, they started booking stuff already. And uh, it, I, I can't wait, man. I learned a lot. He, he uses all these odd time signatures. And Simon did, too, but, you know, uh, I didn't get to improvise with that. I was playing a part. And with Kofi, man, it's like, yeah, I, don't even, I don't even understand what he's doing. But somehow it works out. He, it's funny. Um, the first gig we played, after the gig, I wasn't sure that I did it right because I don't understand those time signatures. And he was going, oh, so you've been playing with Simon, eh? I could tell because you were following me when I was doing this and you went off and did that. And it was in this time signature and blah, blah, blah. And I went, huh? Because I was lost, man. He goes, he thought I knew it. But it, it all comes from, uh, don't think, just try to feel it, you know? I can even do a, a splendid English improvisation. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> if I think about it, I can't. I was back home in America. Um, the music business for you. Do you know Tony, Tony Spinner? It's uh, very difficult. <laughs> USA, USA. Well, where I live, there's no music scene uh, in Arkansas. You can go play um, a nightclub, and most people are there to get drunk. They're not really there for the music. They just put up with the music. <laughs> and uh, you can play in town where people sit and eat. And then immediately when you play, they all go, because it's loud. So there's nowhere really for me to play. And I end up playing cover music when I'm at home. That's why I love coming to Europe. Uh, Holland, you know, is great because I can play my own music. And people will actually listen to it and appreciate it. And that's, that's why I do it. Everybody wants to be loved. So I come here to be loved. Well, of <laughs> Musically, we love you very, very much. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> and that's enough for, uh, Ralph, for our radio show. We got a... a, a, a last time I, I had a late... I had a band coming in. Let him join Sorry, in. Guys. No, I've got to pee. <laughs> <laughs> as long as he doesn't poop. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> On stage. You never know with a bass player. Alex Steyer here. He's the drummer. Say hi, Alex. Hi. <laughs> hey, he listens good. <laughs> What do you expect in a band? What do you have to do? Drive you or keep you in on the control? Well, it's a difference for, for, for a drummer, for instance. Most, yeah. most people say, you have to drive me forward. Uh, all I ask is that somebody uh, help pull the carts. Because I've been, for years, I've always been in bands where uh, people would look to me like, what should we do? And I hate that, you know? Alex, uh, he, he's a player. He knows how to play. And I don't have to say, uh, man, do this, do that. He just does it. And I go, wow, that's cool. And even he knows three different ways to play anything. So he'll start out and he'll say, oh, I could do it like this if you want. And yeah, he's doing it. And I go, oh, that's great too. And he goes, whoa, I could do this too. And I go, oh, no, there's three choices. So um, it's a pleasure. You know, I just want musicians nice. that will give me all they got, 100%, you know, and, and not, not let me drag them, you know. There's nothing worse than having to uh, pull somebody. Like, come on, come on, come on. And they're, they're all pulling. All three of us are, are, you know, pulling the cart. Same for you, Alex. Do you, do you, do you feel that the same of about uh, yeah, uh, Tony? Yeah, 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 I do. But uh, in my way, uh, Tony is... Uh, and big leader, 
Yeah, you are, you are, you are. You have brilliant ideas. And uh, so he gives uh, his ideas to me. I mean, I'm, I'm just uh, only listening and try to follow uh, with all the cross rhythms and uh, whatever. And uh, yeah, I like it. Hey, guitar wise, Tony, you have three guitars with you. Do you ever miss a guitar on stage that you said, ah, I left them back home in uh, America because it's too expensive or uh, I don't like to travel because airlines wreck them in the uh, storage area? Uh, I, I used to, well, I have an old Strat, Stratocaster, it's a 1960, and it used to be my number one guitar, and if I couldn't play it at a gig, it would mess me up. So I quit playing it so that I wouldn't be dependent on that one guitar. And um, I use different guitars, just whatever's available. I wouldn't even have to use these guitars. I could get used to something. Ten minutes you're playing it, you get used to it. And I think it's a better way because things get broken or stolen. Or like you say, they're too expensive to bring. I have some old guitars at home, and uh, they're nice. But the new guitars, they're going to get old too, you know. Okay. So, and the old ones, <laughs> sometimes it's. I've got a guitar, a 1956 Strat, that's worth so much money that I can't even enjoy playing it because all I do is think, oh, if I drop it, oh, if it gets broken, if it gets stolen. So what good is that? I can play my, my cheap guitar and play the hell out of it and not worry about it scratching it or dropping it or if it breaks, I get another one. So Sometimes it's better. Now, of course, Stevie Ray Vaughan, he beat the shit out of his old one. He didn't care. <laughs> but, you know, same with Rory Gallagher. They had a really cool guitar uh, and they just used it all the time. But I don't want to get stuck on just one guitar. I worry too much that I would have to have that guitar to be able to play. Yeah. Not superstitious anymore. Not anymore. Used to be. Not anymore. Do you still practice and still want to learn some, some licks in some songs that you didn't master yet? Uh, I kind of... I, I don't like to practice. Um, I like to sit down and just jam. Uh, being a blues and rock influenced, practicing wouldn't help me because I don't want to play like Yngwie. Yngwie's Yngwie. Um, and you know, a lot of that music is very mathematical. You can, uh, anybody can learn to do it if they have the time and the desire. But music that um, one note versus 20 notes, like Jeff Beck, <laughs> on a good night, he can play one or two notes and it just, just hits you right in the heart, you know? And, uh, or, or like I said, Ingve can blow 50 notes in 30 seconds and uh, it doesn't move me. I mean, it's, it's amazing, and it moves some people, and everybody likes something, but uh, I think simplicity, there's an art to simplicity, and uh, it reaches more people than like Formula One or dirt track cars, <laughs> you know? I like the dirt track, and the Formula One's great, but it's just not for me. We heard that answer before. Yeah. Real time, after you said, it's not about 100 notes, but the, the one note just right. Well, if the, if the guy that plays the 100 notes, if he's getting off on it, that's beautiful, you know. Everybody likes something different. So I'm not saying that it's bad, I'm just saying it's just not for me. Ever thought about the big band with the, with the horn section playing in, in your band? Of, uh, want to uh, record a song with a big old-style blues horn section in it? Uh, I'm just now thinking about it. Um, probably not because... Uh, I, I like to improvise a lot, and we would have to have things charted Too out. Too many so people know what on to stage. Yeah, <laughs> and plus, ooh, hotel rooms. Oh my gosh, you know. <laughs> and more egos. I mean, we have three egos now. No, we have no egos. That's what's cool about this band. Everybody's normal. So, so probably not. <laughs> okay, we're gonna round this up. Thank you very much for uh, again showing up on Blue Smooths Cafe in this time. And Thanks for guys, having us. Have a good tour. We will. See you next time.